The holidays are over, so here's what I'm gonna do to save my holiday poinsettia. So we're all familiar with the holiday poinsettia, which is well known for its really beautiful crimson foliage. And yes, it is foliage. They are traditionally holiday plants because of the brilliant colors they produce. We're all familiar with the deep reds and dark greens, but they come in multitudes of colors. You can see them now in pink, white, variegated styles. There are lots of different varieties of them now. The so-called red flowers, uh, these are not petals at all. They are in fact uh, leaves or bracts and the yellow bit inside them, those are the flowers. With that in mind, taking care of your poinsettia after the holiday season is over um, can be fairly straightforward and simple. Mine really started to fade after the holiday season. I think I pretty much ignored it. It was pretty cold. I didn't give it the care that it required, but it is certainly not dead. And I know I can keep it alive for sure until next year. And hopefully I should be able to reproduce the beautiful, brilliant red bracts for next season if I follow some simple steps. Surprisingly, poinsettia are a type of euphorbia, which most of us are more familiar with euphorbia being more like cactus style desert plants. Uh, but the poinsettia is actually uh, native to like the Mexico, Central, South America, more desert like region. They are warm climate plants. They are not cold climate plants. The reason they've become holiday staples is the color, the beautiful, brilliant green and red that they produce in the wintertime. If you live in a warm climate and you plant these outdoors in the soil, they can grow two to 13 feet. They are actually a type of shrub. They can be a common sight in gardens in California or Hawaii. I should note also being a euphorbia, they can produce a toxic sap that you should be really careful um, around pets, small children. I usually like to wear gloves when I'm handling this plant or cutting it, just to be on the safe side. It should be noted that the red bracts um, only do appear in the winter season, and it's nothing to do with temperature like changing leaves. Um, it is to do with light. Very similar to the Christmas or Thanksgiving cactus, these plants bloom or get their showy red leaves uh, when the light changes. So if you wanna reproduce the beautiful, brilliant colors, you will need to keep this out of the light for at least 12, if not 14 hours of the day. So when it's getting towards, um, you know, the end of fall, maybe end September, mid-October, say when you get home from work, stick it in a closet, put it somewhere where it's not getting any light at all for at least 12 to 14, 15 hours a day. Um, it will take about four to six weeks for it to start to change color and produce those blossoms. Um, so that's why you have to kind of bear that in mind. Uh, it's not an overnight process. It does take a little bit of time, um, but it should be that straightforward and simple. As mentioned, they are warm climate plants. So if you do live somewhere that does get cold or dips below uh, 50 degrees at night, you should keep it indoors. Um, they are not frost resistant. They will freeze and die. And they really don't like the cold. They like the warm climates. So during the holiday season, when your plant is looking fantastic, uh, there's not much that you need to do to it. Uh, make sure and check the soil. It is a euphorbia, so it does not want to be in standing water. It doesn't want to be in really soggy soil, but just make sure the soil doesn't dry out completely. Make sure that it is, um, has a little bit of moisture, water only when the soil is fully dried out and it should remain happy. There's no need to fertilize it during the holiday season. Uh, you may want to add just a general growth fertilizer in the spring. There is no need to fertilize it during the holiday season. You should just like let it do its thing. When the holidays were over for me, my plant was looking pretty sad. Admittedly, I wasn't taking great care of it. The flowers had kind of got some mold on them. Um, they really needed to be trimmed back uh, the first thing I did was remove the decorative foil, checked the soil, which was very dry, so I gave it a good soak, um, and then I checked the rest of the plant. The little yellow centers on this plant are the actual flowers, and mine had faded and even started to get moldy. Um, so to prevent any further mold or rot, I began clipping off the affected area. I had hoped to keep some of the red foliage um, 
but a lot of it just really wasn't looking good. It was starting to really fall off itself. For you, if you have a plant where the flowers are still looking good, uh, feel free to keep them there. Um, in the spring, they may begin to fade. And in that case, feel free to trim them back. And you can clip this plant back pretty far. You'll notice um, each of these little, where the bracts sit in or the kind of nodes of the plant, you can see little growths. And that is actually where the plant can regenerate itself, grow new branches when you do trim it back. So trimming it back definitely helps with the airflow and it also encourages new growth for the plant. So spring when you're trimming back the plant is a good time to shape the plant how you want to, to kind of give it a more bushy shape um, as it grows further into the year. When trimming back, just keep in mind you will want to keep um, at least one or two nodes and you can trim it back pretty far. So I trimmed this back um, a few days ago and it's still looking kind of bad and some of the mold is still there. So I'm going to trim it back further and you can trim this back really, really deep. Um, and each of these bracts you can see where, you know, you can remove all the foliage if you want. Um, I'm going to cut this back pretty far because I really don't want the rot to move any further on this plant. And I've got some nice little sharp clippers. And as I clip this, you can actually see a kind of milky sap that comes out. Um, so that's just, you know, be aware of that. That's why I'm wearing these gloves. And I'm gonna trim all of this back pretty, pretty much all the way. And these are just falling off. So maybe we'll, we'll keep one leaf. So the shape of this is kind of looking a bit sad. I'm gonna actually cut it here so that it's nice, kind of tight shape uh, for the spring when it grows. I'm gonna set this aside into an area of my garden where I have a lot of rescue plants and um, you know is not on display because this obviously is not uh, very beautiful. And then in the springtime, um, that's when I would add a fertilizer that will just help with the growth. Um, and I'll, I'll add kind of a general fertilizer, a growth fertilizer, as opposed to like a flowering fertilizer um, to help encourage these nodes uh, to grow into new branches and bracts. When you take a look at where the bracts are attached to the stem, you can see where new growth is ready to come out given the right conditions. So in this sense, trimming the plant can be really good to encourage the plant to put its growing energy elsewhere besides flowers. So I wasn't planning on repotting this. This is a nice nursery pot that has um, drainage. I'm gonna just take a look at the roots. Uh, the soil is okay. Um, it's pretty cocoa coir heavy, which means it is retaining um, some moisture and the fact that there was some uh, mold on it suggests that maybe um, I should repot this and you can actually see uh, it obviously we had a rain event here not too long ago so I think it got a little bit overly saturated but the roots for the most part are white and not uh, rotten there's a few like root tips that could be um, trimmed off. So I am gonna go ahead and change this soil to a nice mix of more cactus mix, mixed with like a more general potting soil so that we've got the good drainage ability of cactus mix. It usually has like pumice, um, sand, it's really gritty, um, it's really good for drainage, um, but then also some potting soil that will have more organic material. I'm not gonna go too crazy with repotting this. I'm gonna just, remove it from the nursery pot. I'm going to keep it in the same nursery pot, but I'm just going to tease out some of this soil that was looking kind of funky. Um, it's probably not doing the plant too much good, especially at the top where I did notice um, a little bit of moldiness. So, which is weird because I didn't really water this plant much. So I think that was just maybe some stuff in the um, mix. So it's not um, root bound or anything. The soil is just a little bit sludgy. Um, but the roots actually look pretty good. White roots good. Um, some of these are more mature roots, the kind of squishy dark roots um, that suggests root rot. So I'm um, just gonna tease all this old soil out, not going too crazy. 
I mean, and I think I think we're good with that. Um, so here is my here's the nursery pot. I've got some nice cactus mix. Um, as mentioned, it's kind of gritty, sandy. It's got um, I think they're big pumice stones. It's really great for drainage. And then in here, I have more of a potting mix that does have the more water retaining um, organic materials. So I'm just going to kind of mix them up. I've got do a very unscientific a handful of the cactus mix, a couple of handfuls of the cactus mix, a few little handfuls of the potting mix stir them all around. This is, you know, not fully full. Make a nice little hole in there and then place it back in here. I might have actually added too much. So the roots look okay. They look pretty healthy. Um, even for being in kind of a uh, pretty soggy soil. Uh, I did lose some roots, but just the ends. So I'm just gonna place this back into its nursery pot and kind of backfill around it. Not squishing it in too hard because like I said, drainage is key with this kind of thing. I think it'll just be happier with this um, mix of soil because a lot of times um, plants, I don't usually repot my plants um, when I bring them home uh, unless they look like they could use it. You know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Um, but I do think that there is some value in just checking the soil. And a lot of times the soil, especially if you're buying really good organic soil, it's gonna be better than the stuff that comes uh, with your plant in the nursery pot because those plants are on these like nursery conditions, these perfect conditions. It's really hard to replicate that in your own home. So putting in a really good, well-draining mix is always really helpful for your plants. So here we are, uh, it's not pretty, uh, but I do believe this plant will uh, start to thrive come the spring. It's gonna have a lot of new growth. And then when it comes to fall, September, October, making sure it's in complete darkness for 14, 15 hours a day, and we'll see those beautiful, bright colors uh, come back once again. I hope this video has been helpful for uh, post-holiday treatment of your poinsettia. Uh, feel free to leave me a comment. I'm always happy to answer any questions that I can. I always say I'm not a plant expert, but I am a plant fan. Um, you can also find me on TikTok and Instagram and be sure and subscribe.